this aptly named application called 7 to 10 is the co-author of that, Philip Hodgetts. Right off the bat, I'm going to say that Apple were right. It cannot be done with perfect fidelity. The data structures between Final Cut 7 and Final Cut Pro 10 are just too different, and the XML import into Final Cut Pro 10 is still a little immature. Um, we look forward to getting better and better with each release, but certainly the difference between the initial release last uh, Jul no, of the XML in September and what we can do with it now in January is quite, is quite dramatic. We couldn't have done anywhere near the fidelity of the translation that we, that we have now done. And I have to say, this is a whole lot better than Greg and I thought we could ever do when we started down this path six months ago. It's consumed six months of Greg's life. The first version, seven, 10 to 7, being released, which gave Apple the confidence that we could pull this off. Um, and now we have an app that I'm very, very proud of. It is, even with our other applications, this is the single most complicated piece of software we have ever built. And it's the simplest piece of software we have ever built. It has a zero interface. It's basically just a drag and drop or open up the file and send it to, to Final Cut 10. But it's very, very powerful and it can do a, a lot. So let me just look at a, a putative Final Cut 7 timeline. That um, We have some, some motion templates and you know, motion templates are not going to translate. There's too much change between one and the other. Uh, you can, as we note in our, in our help document, you can republish the, or update the motion template in F Motion 5 and then publish that back to Final Cut Pro 10. But that's a, a, an extra couple of steps that you need to do. And there are a couple of things. So we focused on the simplicity, we focused on the transparency, uh, the fidelity, and also the transparency, as I'll, I'll explain. So considering the, the fidelity, we've got a whole fairly complicated, you know, fairly standard um, timeline here. We've got people on camera, we've got some B-roll, some of the continuous, we've got a little bit of colour behind that because otherwise it would run out and I'd see black on the side. I've uh, got some sequences here, here where we've got um, transitions between B-roll, standalone B-roll. We've got some slow-mo. This one has got a, uh, a motion effect and it's 50% and it's reverse. Um, what else we got here? So, um, um, we've got a nested sequence in here somewhere. There's a nested sequence. So we see a little bit of nested sequence work there. Um, I've also put in here quite arbitrarily because they really don't fit with the, uh, with the project, but some picked files, because Final Cut Pro 10 does not support picked files. Hmm, I wonder what will happen there. So what else have we got in here? Um, oh, all of these images have been adjusted, or most of them have been adjusted in um, size and position to some degree. So if I show fit window, fit all, you can see that the actual image is outside of the bounds of the picture, of the, of the frame. So we've readjusted, repositioned, adjusted, and, and moved all of these around. And I also down at the end here have a completely, absolutely unrelated multi-clip <laughs> multi of Walter Mersch in, in Boston, courtesy of the Boston uh, Creative uh, Pro user group. Uh, it's also it's a 720p multicam clip in a 1080i sequence, uh, just so that we can have some complication there. Um, now, all I need to do, of course, I've got bin structures. Unlike our 10 to 7 product, 7 to 10 will take your entire project, as in the Final Cut 7 meaning of project, meaning your bins, your sequences, it'll bring all of the cross uh, and translate them appropriately. So all you need to do is export, export XML and that creates a file that you will then drag and drop onto, onto uh, 7 to 10. I'm not going to do the translation because it's... Um, it's about three and a half minutes, and I just don't know that many good jokes. Uh, so, oh, before I go into Final Cut 10, though, I'm just going to do a little check here. Uh, okay, I'll just kind of... Because I just uh, manage my events with Event Manager 10. I'm just going to make sure that there is nothing um, in here that I don't want you to see. So I control which, app, which events and which projects open when I open Final Cut Pro 10. It also keeps down the, the load of, on memory in Final Cut Pro 10. 
And it also tells you something, this is just organizing the way Apple said, it just automates it for you. But what it does also is tell you where drives are offline that you don't, may not necessarily know that they're offline. So nothing there that I, I am concerned about. So I'm just going to run up Final Cut Pro 10, which because this is a beautiful SSD drive is really fast. And the fastest thing you can do for your computer is to put an SSD drive in it, in, in my opinion. It's a 500 gig SSD. How much does that cost? Uh, an enormous amount of money. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but my time is valuable. Well, that's my story. That's my justification. And uh, it's proving me to be a complete and absolute liar while, it <laughs> while we watch the spinning beach ball as it opens up Final Cut Pro 10. Isn't that terrific? <laughs> okay. Yeah, you see, you should never do that. So, I'm going to well, get control. I'm just going to close the angle editor to start with. Um, no, it's closed. Okay. Don't really want to look at that. This is the, let's just close off those. Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, great shots, Philip. Ah, uh, yes, <laughs> it's my Whitney tribute. <laughs> but instead, instead of that, let's, uh, let's just look up here. Come on, can we have Walter in there? Yeah. So what I have here are keyword collections that I can't find that magic point to open that out. Why can't I not do that? There are keyword collections that matched our <coughs> bins within Final Cut Pro 7. Um, there's the bossy cow bin, there's our multi-clip. Um, any sequences will be tagged with a, a keyword collection of Final Cut Pro 7 sequences and a compound clip will be created. The big unsung hero of Final Cut Pro 10 is compound clips. Uh, you can build full edits without going into a project. You can create a compound clip timeline, build the edits into there, and for us it has the one big advantage as that we can associate your edit in 7 with the actual media and bin structure as we translate them. Right now the XML in Final Cut Pro 10 does not support our ability to send it a combined project and event file. So we worked around that by creating a... a uh, compound clip, which of course you can easily break into a sequence or you can just open it up by the, with a simple double click. Hey, that SSD drive is really paying off. <laughs> um, so the fidelity, there's uh, pretty much the sequence that we had. Let me just close this off for the moment. Timeline index. The motion templates don't come across um, but in the principle of transparency, every time we make a change to something that is not exactly the same way as it was in your seven project, we tell you. We put it in the timeline index as a to-do marker. You need to do something here. I thought that was pretty good. We really thought that was much better than throwing a report somewhere into your, into your documents folder and another copy and another copy and another copy every time you bring something into something else from your pro. <laughs> Actually, we thought their reporting was pretty good, but we did feel we had to one-up them slightly. So everywhere here that we've done something, we've replaced a colour mat with a, with, a different, with a different mat. Anytime we've had to do something different, you'll notice here that we've, we've still got our sequence of, of images and if I uh, take it down to 25% and select that, turn this on, you can see that the size and position scaling have all been maintained. Uh, this clip that was a, an MP4 that was thrown over, it was scaled massively up. You can see it has, uh, has been translated. Our speed change was translated. Where was the speed change was on? Uh, I can't find the clip. The speed transit change is to accurately translate. I'll find the clip in a moment. Um, that series of picked files that we had. How is this? How is this possible? Final Cut Pro 10 doesn't support picked files, but it's very easy in translation to say 
you know what, that's not going to be supported as a picked file, so let's make a high resolution TIFF file and put it in the same media location and connect to that instead. So in translating, we also make sure that any picked files which would otherwise be left behind will be brought forward into, into Final Cut Pro 10. And, oh, there's my speed change. It's a horrible shot, but uh, half speed, reversed. Translated exactly as it was from Final Cut Pro 7 into the 10. <laughs> Michael suggests that we no longer need EDLs. <laughs> uh, and there's our 720 multi-clip, and it's still a multi-cam clip, but it's been translated to Final Cut Pro 10 multi-cam format. Sadly, we're not going to be able to do the same thing going back. In an update to, to 10 to 7, we'll finish your Final Cut Pro 10 multi-clip and just produce one angle in Final Cut 7. Uh, Final Cut Pro 10's multi-clip is just too powerful and just too forgiving for us to be able to translate it backwards into the much more limited structure of Final Cut 7. So that's it. That's really it. We've, we've got everything high fidelity, the highest possible fidelity translation. We translate about 70 filters and 60 transitions or something the other way around and 30 audio filters. We don't at this release translate your settings because there's no way of sending that in the XML right now. Of course, we expect this to grow and mature as, as Final Cut Pro 10 grows and matures, and we'll be able to do more. But right now, it is a good enough translation that you can move forward and take the project for... Oh, a couple, oh sorry. I've nearly forgot something very important. The Whitney Tribute. The Whitney Tribute, yes, yes. No, uh, and I need to go back to my... Yeah. Tracks are metadata. They have become evolved to become a pseudo metadata. And I would hate to think that I would ever be responsible for losing anybody's metadata. So we have a, a role assigned that matches your track assignment in Final Cut Pro 7 so that you can continue to, to manage your tracks that way. Uh, so, uh, I'm responsible for about 20, 25% of this, which is the, what the heck is Final Cut 7 doing? And I've learned a lot more about Final Cut 7 in the process. A um, few things that we could have done. Uh, but uh, Greg, the unassuming young man on the, the front ticket box, is the guy that's done 80% of the work. He's been swearing at this constantly for the last mm, six months. And it's consumed that much of his life. So uh, if you think this is great, give him a pat on the back because it's his great work. But, oh. <laughs> One last point. It's $9.99 in the App Store. It brings across all transitions that are possible to translate, some 74. Third, no third party anything is supported. Does it, because it's not supported in the XML. Does it translate page peels? Uh, page peel is, is mapped to page peel, yes. Uh, Les is asking if, uh, when I exported, did I export the entire project? Yes, I did. If it had 10 sequences in there, 10 sequences would be translated to 10 compound clips in your FCP sequences keyword collection. So yes, we, it is a full translation of the project in the sense of the Final Cut Pro 7 project. Can you do just one sequence? If you only want to do one sequence, yes, the behavior will be slightly different in that you won't get any bin structure. Uh, Final Cut Pro will just bring your media into an event that it creates. Um, oh, no, sorry, that's the way it was going to work. One, no, it will still work the same, but you won't. You just won't. It'll be a compound clip in an event with media, but no, no bin structure. Are you still having issues with PAL? There were definitely some 50 hertz issues in the early days, and took us longer than it should have to get a, an update out. It was ready two days later, and App Store problems. That's part of the frustrations of working with an ecosystem that you don't control, is that there are parts of it you don't control. Uh, I believe that with the update that's going through the, the process uh, in the next couple of days, we've attacked all of our 50 hertz PAL-related problems. But it but doesn't mean we've seen every single combination. So if you do get a combination that doesn't translate, we'd like to see the XML file from Final Cut 7 because we will make them all work. 